In this lesson, we're going to take a look at query parameters. And if you've never worked with an API, you may not know what that is, but I guarantee you, you have worked with them before and you have seen them. You just had no idea what they were. And so I'm on Yelp.com and I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, but I'm just going to do a quick search here. I've just picked a random city. In this case, it's Miami. We're going to search for that. And I want you to take a look at the URL. And so our URL is, first of all, we have the domain name, which is kind of like the IP address. And then we have the specific endpoint that we want to reach. So this is the slash search endpoint. Uh, and so in their API, they've set up, uh, you know, some sort of endpoint that probably is, uh, allows you to search for restaurants. And then we have a question mark. And I know you guys have seen this before because pretty much any website you've ever, uh, you know, used, uh, you'll see that question mark whenever you're, you know, searching for things. And any results you get, you'll see that in the URL. And so everything to the right of that is what's referred to as query parameters. So all of this is query parameters. And a query parameter is a optional key value pair that appears to, to the right of the question mark. And these query parameters allow us to kind of filter the results of a request. So, you know, if we're trying to retrieve posts, maybe we don't want all posts. Maybe we want to get posts that were created in the last two hours. Maybe we want to get uh, posts that, uh, you know, if it's a social media type app, maybe we want to get posts that have uh, received over 100 likes, right? These are all things that you would do using query parameters where you can say, hey, uh, you could just pass in a key and a pair and you can say, I want to find posts, you know, that are less than two hours old. And so a lot of other operations uh, that are necessary in an API, things like pagination, uh, those are all going to be done with query parameters. And if you take a look at this one, uh, since we searched for Miami, right, it looks like it passed a query parameter called find underscore loc, which probably means location. And then it says Miami, Florida. And so it's going to basically talk to the API and say, hey, listen, I need you to get me all the restaurants and I want you to filter down based off of restaurants in Miami. And so that's kind of how query parameters work. And so for us, it's, it's up to us to define what query parameters we want to allow and what we want them to do. And it's going to vary from app to app, but you'll see that most APIs have a couple of uh, query parameters that they all use. So let's go to our uh, app real quick. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to our post router. And in this case, we've got our path operation of retrieving all posts. And what I want to do is I want to let the user be able to kind of filter down on the posts that they want to see. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to allow them to specify how many posts they want to retrieve altogether. So I want to give them the option to say, hey, I want 10 posts, or maybe I want 100 posts, or maybe I want uh, 50 posts. We should allow the user to define that. And so to, to allow a query parameter, we could just go into our path operation function and just pass in another argument. So I'm going to do question mark. Then we give it the name of the query parameter. So this is the key, essentially. And I'm going to call this limit. So this is going to limit the number of posts they get. And this is going to be of type int. And we're going to give it a default value. So we'll say that, you know, by default, if they don't provide a limit, uh, we're going to say the limit by default is 10. And now I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to print out limit. All right. And I'll show you guys how to actually send that query parameter. So let's go to our get all posts. And so to send a query parameter, it's very easy. You just type in a question mark. Then you grab the name of the query parameter, which once again is limit. So we'll grab limit. And then you say it's, you set it equal to whatever value you want it to be. So if I want to get a limit of three, if I hit send, right, nothing should have changed in our code, but you can see that we were able to print out the limit. So that's how we access query parameters in fast API. It's pretty simple. You just pass it in as another argument into your path operation function. But let's actually set up our query so that it now takes into account the limit. And with SQL Alchemy, uh, anytime you want to, you know, perform another operation, you usually have a built-in method. So I'm going to remove this dot all for now. And so if I want to uh, limit the number of results, I just do dot. And then let's see what uh, methods we have at our disposal. Uh, since we're looking for something that limits something, let's maybe check to see if there is a limit method. And it uh, looks like I don't see one here, but there actually is. We can do limit, and then here I'm just going to pass in the limit variable. And then after that, we can just do the dot all as we usually do. All right, and so now, well, first of all, in our database, we don't actually have that many posts. So I'm just going to create a couple. Well, actually, I could just do this through our API a lot quicker. So I'm just going to create a whole bunch of posts. And so that should give us five posts. Now well, let's create a few more.
All right, so we've got 11 posts now. And we'll go back to our API and we'll say, I want a limit of three. So let's send that and let's see if we only get three posts. So we get one, two, three. Perfect. And if I don't provide a limit, well, actually, let's try a different number. Let's try five now. All right, we get one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. And if we don't provide a limit altogether, it should return 10 because our default was set to 10 posts, so a limit of 10. And so we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there are 11 results, so there's one result that it didn't provide. So we've got the limit functionality down. What I want to do now is allow the user to skip results. So it grabbed, you know, depending on however Postgres has decided to return, uh, you know, 10 posts, it grabbed the first 10 based off of some criteria. And if we actually take a look at how it did, it looks like we got ID of 10, ID of four. So it's kind of just all over the place. Uh, so it's probably uh, not sorting based off of any specific field. We may want to specify that, but uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to actually set the limit equal to two. And so we'll get the first two. However, Postgres determines what are the first two it should send, we get two. But let's say we want to skip over a couple of them. Maybe we want to skip the first, the first two. Maybe we want to skip these two. Well, I want to be able to send another query parameter called skip so that we can specify how many we want to skip. And if you want to send more than one query parameter, we just do the end keyword and then we provide the next key value pair. So it'd be like skip equals two. And so just taking a look at the IDs here, we've got one with an ID of 10 and one with an ID of four, and we want to skip both of those. So going back to our code, we're going to provide another path operation function, uh, sorry, another argument into the function, and we'll call this skip. This is going to be of integer, and the default is going to be, uh, we'll say zero. We don't want to skip anything by default. And to add this to our query, uh, we use the keyword offset. We do offset. And then here, I'm going to say offset equals skip. All right, and so we should be able to skip over both of these. And so if I provide a skip of two, you can see it first starts out at nine and then 11. If we do skip zero, right, it shouldn't skip any, right? 10 and then an ID of four. If we skip one, it should just skip the 10 and then start off on four. And we can see that the first one is four. So it allows us to skip over posts. And so that's ultimately how we're going to implement pagination on the front end is because the front end should be able to skip um, based off of what page they're on. So if each page returns 20 results and you want to go to page two, then you want to skip 20 results. If you want to go to page three, you would skip 40 results. Now, the last query parameter I want to set up is a search functionality. I want the user to be able to search uh, based off of, you know, some keywords in the title or maybe even the content, depending on how we want to implement searching. Uh, for, for now, we're just going to say we'll be able to search based off of the title. And the way that the search will work is we'll have another and, and we'll say search equals, and then, you know, some random text. And so once again, we're going to provide another argument called search. And this is going to be of type string. However, this is, you know, we can't exactly give a default search. So I'm going to say this is a uh, optional. It's going to be an optional string, so we don't have to provide this. And the default is uh, just an empty quotes. And it looks like I have to import optional from fast API or from typing. And so here I'll just say import optional. And this is going to give us an optional query parameter. And so what we're going to do here is I'll say filter. And to filter this, and just kind of like how we filtered based off of a specific uh, user ID or a specific post ID, I can say models.post dot title. And then we can use a method called contains. So we can say contains and then the search keyword. So this will allow us to provide some kind of string and it'll just search for the entire title of a post and it'll see if the search keywords are anywhere in the post 
title. It doesn't have to match completely. It just has to be somewhere in the post. So this will give us a little bit of flexibility so that we don't have to match the exact name of the post. We can just provide some keywords like uh, like hot dogs or beaches or whatever, and it should be able to just see if it's contained in there. So let's take a look at our database. Uh, you can see that we've got a lot of ones that say top beaches in Florida. So I'm just going to do a search. And if I just search for beaches, it should return all of these because they all contain the word beaches. And I'm just going to do a search and I'll, I'll get rid of the, the limits and the skip for now. We don't really need that. And all of the results should be. Actually, I don't think I saved it. Let me let me save that. And now if I do this, you can see that every result is going to have the word beaches in in the title. And when it comes to query parameters, you can string as many as you want. So if you wanted the the limit as well, and we'll set the limit to two. And we can also provide a skip equals one. You can add as many of the query parameters that you want. So now you can see that we set the limit to two and we skip the first one. Now, the last thing I want to show you guys is how to use spaces in your search query, um, because right now uh, we just have the word beaches. But let's say I wanted, uh, you know, just going into our Postgres database. Let's see what I've got. Maybe I want to search for beaches, hello, or something beaches, right? How do I, how would I search for that in a URL? I can't put a space in the URL. I can't say, you know, something beaches. So how do I do a space? Well, I can do percent and 20, which is reference, uh, which means space in your URL. And then you can do beaches. So then just to verify that that's actually returning what we want, I'm going to do a print. I'm going to print out the search keyword. And we're going to test this out. So if I hit send, you can see that it returned the one result that has the word something and then beaches, um, but it doesn't return anything else.